Hello, welcome. Take a moment, read the problem, try it out, and then press play and we'll solve it together. Okay, we've got a lot to unpack in this problem. First of all, we're told that we're using the identity sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. Let's remember what this means. We've got an x-axis, we've got a y-axis. Let's put a circle on there. Let's have it be purple. So this circle here, we'll call it the unit circle. And that means that the radius of the circle is 1. And we do all this because the idea is you can then draw a triangle. Let's draw a triangle on here. Let's make the triangle blue. Okay. Now you could draw a triangle really with any angle inside. It doesn't need to be an acute triangle like I have right here. I just want to give you an idea of what's going on. The idea is that if the hypotenuse is 1, right, this is also the radius of your circle that this distance here is some x distance. Remember how coordinate grids work? You do x first, then you go up y, and that gets you to this point here. This point is a point x comma y. Well, the idea is that if you're looking at this angle here, theta, and you say, what's the sine of that angle? It's opposite over hypotenuse, and that's y over 1. So y is really equal, y over 1, or just y, is equal to the sine of theta. And then here, x, What's the cosine of theta? Because the cosine of theta is adjacent x over 1. So x is the same thing as the cosine of theta over 1, or just the cosine of theta. Cosine of theta. All right. Why is that important? Well, for a right triangle, right, just intuitively speaking, with the Pythagorean theorem, we know that x squared plus y squared is 1. x squared plus y squared is 1 in a right triangle. And furthermore, if x is the same thing as cosine, we could say that the cosine squared of x, or cosine squared of theta is x squared, right? And also we can say that y squared is the sine squared of theta. So that means that writing this statement is the same thing as writing this statement. I'll write in the order they wrote it. They did y squared plus x squared. They just wrote it the other way, which is pretty normal, pretty typical. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. It's, the, it's an application of the Pythagorean theorem. Now, they tell us that, right? Now, the background might not be necessary to solve this problem, but I wanted you to see where that comes from, because the next thing is they want us to find the tangent of theta. Well, tangent of theta is equal to sine over cosine. Okay? All right. Now, if that's true... And the, and the cosine of theta is negative 0.7. Now, if cosine is negative and cosine is x, that means we're actually dealing with a triangle where theta, and they say theta is in quadrant 2. We're actually dealing with a, a triangle in the second quadrant. So let's just draw that. Let's use red to represent the problem we're dealing with. So we really got some angle over here, some triangle over here that we're dealing with. But we're just, you know, we because we're defining sine as y and cosine as x, we can now go over here in the second quadrant, make that our theta, right? And here we're saying that, well, the sine of this theta is this height right here. This, this is some point x, y. And the cosine of theta is x over 1. But they're telling us the cosine is negative 0.7. We don't know the value of y, and we know the hypotenuse can be represented by 1 if we think of this in terms of a unit circle, which we are here. So we don't know the sine squared of theta, right? So that's going to be left out. But if we can find that, we can then find the tangent, because we have the cosine of theta. So plus the cosine squared of theta, well, that's just negative 0 0.7 squared. And that equals 1. So I'm trying to solve for um, the sine squared of theta. So when I square a negative, this is going to be the same thing as 0.7 squared, right? I could just square that negative, plus the sine squared of theta equals 1. And that means the sine squared of theta is going to equal 1 minus 0.7 squared. And I want to know what sine is, not the sine squared, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides, positive or negative square root of 1 minus 0 0.7 squared. Okay, so that means that the sine of theta equals what? Let's just use our calculator here. Okay, so here um, we're dealing with trig, and, and many of these trig problems you want to make sure you're, you're in radian mode, which I am here. 
and I think that will work for us. So I'm going to do second square root of 1 minus 0.7 squared. And that gets me 0 0.71, uh, 0.7141, so on. And just to check that, if we, that's also the same thing. If I did 1 minus 0.7 squared, that's 0.51. Now, you might leave it like this, actually. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a moment. But the idea is that the sign up there is about 0 0.7141. So I'll just write that 0.7141. I'll estimate that 0 0.7141. Um, OK, but we're also in the second quadrant. Um, and actually, I'm not going to write as 0.51. I'm going to leave it like this. So um, I'm going to then say, sorry, I'm rambling a little bit. I'm trying to find the tangent, right? To the nearest hundredth. Now, I only wrote up to 0.7141, and I'm only going to write that here. But really, I'm, since I have a calculator at my disposal, I'm really going to not round at all. You don't want to round really until the very end of the problem, right? And we know the cosine of the a is negative 0.7, so the tangent should be negative as well to be some negative number. So on the calculator, what I'm going to do, you might have kept 0.51, and I was going to say then you would enter in the square root of that divided by negative 0.7, but we already have the square root of that here. Right, and take the whole number and then divide that by negative 0.7. Now, if you don't have the ability to scroll up and grab that number, just write it as the square root of 0.51. That's what I was going to say. And then here, this gives you negative 1.02 to the nearest hundredth, and that's our answer negative 1.02, and that makes sense. The tangent is negative in our second quadrant because it's the ratio of sine to cosine, and sines are positive there, and cosines are negative. All right, I hope that helped.